The Zhou dynasty or the Zhou Kingdom Chinese, Zhou Chao, Pinyin, Zhou Shao, o, o, was a Chinese dynasty that followed the Shang dynasty and preceded the Qin dynasty. The Zhou dynasty lasted longer than any other dynasty in Chinese history. The military control of China by the royal house, surnamed Ji Chinese, Ji Pinyin, Ji T, lasted initially from 1046 until 771 BC for a period known as the Western Zhou and the political sphere of influence it created continued well into Eastern Zhou for another 500 years. During the Zhou dynasty, centralized power decreased throughout the spring and autumn period until the Warring States period in the last two centuries of the Zhou dynasty. In this period, the Zhou court had little control over its constituent states that were at war with each other until the Qin state consolidated power and formed the Qin dynasty in 221 BC. The Zhou dynasty had formally collapsed only 35 years earlier, although the dynasty had only nominal power at that point. This period of Chinese history produced what many consider the zenith of Chinese bronze ware making. The Zhou dynasty also spans the period in which the written script evolved into its almost modern form with the use of an archaic clerical script that emerged during the late Warring States period. History Foundation Topic. Traditional myth According to Chinese mythology, the Zhou lineage began when Zhang Yuan, a consort of the legendary Emperor Ku, miraculously conceived a child, Qi, the abandoned one, after stepping into the divine footprint of Shangdi. Qi was a culture hero credited with surviving three abandonments by his mother and with greatly improving Xia agriculture, to the point where he was granted lordship over Tai and the surname Ji by his own Xia king and a later posthumous name, Ho Ji, Lord of Millet, by the Tang of Shang. He even received sacrifice as a harvest god. The term Ho Ji was probably a hereditary title attached to a lineage. Qi's son, or rather that of the Hoji, Buzu is said to have abandoned his position as agrarian master Chinese, Nong Shi Pinyin, Nong Shi in old age and either he or his son Ju abandoned agriculture entirely, living a nomadic life in the manner of the Shirong and Rongdi see Hua Yi distinction. Ju's son Lu, however, led his people to prosperity by restoring agriculture and settling them at a place called Bin, which his descendants ruled for generations. Tai later led the clan from Bin to Zhou, an area in the Wei River Valley of modern-day Kashan County. The duke passed over his two elder sons Tai Bo and Zhang Yang to favor Jili, a warrior who conquered several Shirong tribes as a vassal of the Shang kings Wu Yi and Wen Ding before being treacherously killed. Tai Bo and Zhang Yang had supposedly already fled to the Yangtze Delta, where they established the state of Wu among the tribes there. Jili's son Wen bribed his way out of imprisonment and moved the Zhou capital to Feng within present-day Xi'an. Around 1046 BC, Wen's son Wu and his ally Zhang Zia led an army of 45,000 men and 300 chariots across the Yellow River and defeated King Zhou of Shang at the Battle of Muya, marking the beginning of the Zhou dynasty. The Zhou in fact a member of the defeated Shang royal family as the Duke of Song, which was held by descendants of the Shang royal family until its end. This practice was referred to as two kings, three reverences. Topic: Culture. According to Nicholas Bodman, the Zhou appear to have spoken a language not basically different in vocabulary and syntax from that of the Shang. A recent study by David McCraw, using lexical statistics, reached the same conclusion. The Zhou emulated extensively Shang cultural practices, perhaps to legitimize their own rule, and became the successors to Shang culture. At the same time, the Zhou may also have been connected to the Shirong, a broadly defined cultural group to the west of the Shang, which the Shang regarded as tributaries. According to the historian Li Feng, the term, Rong, during the Western Zhou period was likely used to designate political and military adversaries rather than cultural and ethnic others. Western Zhou King Wu maintained the old capital for ceremonial purposes but constructed a new one for his palace and administration nearby at Hao. 
Although Wu's early death left a young and inexperienced heir, the Duke of Zhou assisted his nephew King Cheng in consolidating royal power. Wary of the Duke of Zhou's increasing power, the three guards, Zhou princes stationed on the eastern plain, rose in rebellion against his regency. Even though they garnered the support of independent-minded nobles, Shang partisans and several Dongyi tribes, the Duke of Zhou quelled the rebellion, and further expanded the Zhou kingdom into the east. To maintain Zhou authority over its greatly expanded territory and prevent other revolts, he set up the Fungian system. Furthermore, he countered Zhou's crisis of legitimacy by expounding the doctrine of the Mandate of Heaven while accommodating important Shang rituals at Wangcheng and Chengzhou. Over time, this decentralized system became strained as the familial relationships between the Zhou kings and the regional dynasties thinned over the generations. Peripheral territories developed local power and prestige on par with that of the Zhou. When King Yu demoted and exiled his Zhang queen in favor of the beautiful commoner Bao Si, the disgraced queen's father the Marquis of Shen joined with Zheng and the Quanrong barbarians to sack Hao in 771 BC. Some modern scholars have surmised that the sack of Haojing might have been connected to a Scythian raid from the Altai before their westward expansion. With King Yu dead, a conclave of nobles met at Shen and declared the Marquis's grandson King Ping. The capital was moved eastward to Wangcheng, marking the end of the Western Zhou Shi Zhou Pi Shi Zhou and the beginning of the Eastern Zhou dynasty, Dong Zhou Pi Dong Zhou. Topic: <laughs> Eastern Zhou. The Eastern Zhou was characterized by an accelerating collapse of royal authority, although the king's ritual importance allowed over five more centuries of rule. The Confucian chronicle of the early years of this process led to its title of the Spring and Autumn period. The partition of Jin in the mid-5th century BC initiated a second phase, the Warring States. In 403 BC, the Zhou court recognized Han, Zhao, and Wei as fully independent states. Duke Wei of Wei, in 344 BC, was the first to claim the royal title of king Chinese, Wang for himself. Others followed, marking a turning point, as rulers did not even entertain the pretense of being vassals of the Zhou court, instead proclaiming themselves fully independent kingdoms. A series of states rose to prominence before each falling in turn, and Zhou was a minor player in most of these conflicts. The last Zhou king is traditionally taken to be Nan, who was killed when Qin captured the capital Wangcheng in 256 BC. A King Wei was declared, but his splinter state was fully removed by 249 BC. Qin's unification of China concluded in 221 BC with Qin Shiwang's annexation of Qi. The Eastern Zhou, however, is also remembered as the Golden Age of Chinese philosophy, the hundred schools of thought which flourished as rival lords patronized itinerant Qi scholars as led by the example of Qi's Jisha Academy. The nine schools of thought which came to dominate the others were Confucianism as interpreted by Mencius and others, Legalism, Taoism, Mohism, the utopian communalist agriculturalism, two strains of diplomatists, the sophistic logicians, Sun Tzu's militarists, and the naturalists. Although only the first three of these went on to receive imperial patronage in later dynasties, doctrines from each influenced the others and Chinese society in sometimes unusual ways. The Mohists, for instance, found little interest in their praise of meritocracy but much acceptance for their mastery of defensive siege warfare. Much later, however, their arguments against nepotism were used in favor of establishing the imperial examination system. Culture and society <inaudible> Mandate of heaven and the justification of power Zhou rulers introduced what was to prove one of East Asia's most enduring political doctrines. The concept of the mandate of heaven. They did this so by asserting that their moral superiority justified taking over Shang wealth and territories, also that heaven had imposed a moral mandate on them to replace the Shang and return good governance to the people. The mandate of heaven was presented as a religious compact between the Zhou people and their supreme god in heaven, literally the sky god. The Zhou agreed that since worldly affairs were supposed to align with those of the heavens, the heavens conferred legitimate power on only one person, the Zhou ruler. 
In return, the ruler was duty-bound to uphold heaven's principles of harmony and honor. Any ruler who failed in this duty, who let instability creep into earthly affairs, or who let his people suffer, would lose the mandate. Under this system, it was the prerogative of spiritual authority to withdraw support from any wayward ruler and to find another, more worthy one. In this way, the Zhou Sky God legitimated regime change. In using this creed, the Zhou rulers had to acknowledge that any group of rulers, even they themselves, could be ousted if they lost the mandate of heaven because of improper practices. The Book of Odes written during the Zhou period clearly intoned this caution. The early Zhou kings contended that heaven favored their triumph because the last Shang kings had been evil men whose policies brought pain to the people through waste and corruption. After the Zhou came to power, the mandate became a political tool. One of the duties and privileges of the king was to create a royal calendar. This official document defined times for undertaking agricultural activities and celebrating rituals. But unexpected events such as solar eclipses or natural calamities threw the ruling house's mandate into question. Since rulers claimed that their authority came from heaven, the Zhou made great efforts to gain accurate knowledge of the stars and to perfect the astronomical system on which they based their calendar. Zhou legitimacy also arose indirectly from Shang material culture through the use of bronze ritual vessels, statues, ornaments, and weapons. As the Zhou emulated the Shang's large-scale production of ceremonial bronzes, they developed an extensive system of bronze metal working that required a large force of tribute labor. Many of its members were Shang, who were sometimes forcibly transported to New Zhou to produce the bronze ritual objects which were then sold and distributed across the lands, symbolizing Zhou legitimacy. Feudalism. Western writers often describe the Zhou period as feudal because the Zhou's Fengjian system invites comparison with medieval rule in Europe. There were many similarities between the decentralized systems. When the dynasty was established, the conquered land was divided into hereditary fiefs Zuhu Juhou, that eventually became powerful in their own right. In matters of inheritance, the Zhou dynasty recognized only patrilineal primogeniture as legal. According to Dao 1934-17-31, the Sung Fa or descent line system has the following characteristics, patrilineal descent, patrilineal succession, patriarchate, sib exogamy, and primogeniture. The system, also called extensive stratified patrilineage, was defined by the anthropologist Kuang Chi Chong as characterized by the fact that the eldest son of each generation formed the main of line descent and political authority, whereas the younger brothers were moved out to establish new lineages of lesser authority. The farther removed, the lesser the political authority." Abray defines the descent line system as follows. A great line is the line of eldest sons continuing indefinitely from a founding ancestor. A lesser line is the line of younger sons going back no more than five generations. Great lines and lesser lines continually spin off new lesser lines, founded by younger sons." K. E. Brashier writes in his book, "'Ancestral Memory in Early China' about the Sung Fa system of patrilineal primogeniture. The greater lineage, if it has survived, is the direct succession from father to eldest son and is not defined via the collateral shifts of the lesser lineages. In discussions that demarcate between trunk and collateral lines, the former is called a zong and the latter a zhu, whereas the whole lineage is dubbed the shi. On one hand every son who is not the eldest and hence not heir to the lineage territory has the potential of becoming a progenitor and fostering a new trunk lineage ideally he would strike out to cultivate new lineage territory According to the Zhou commentary, the son of heaven divided land among his feudal lords, his feudal lords divided land among their dependent families and so forth down the pecking order to the officers who had their dependent kin and the commoners who each had his apportioned relations and all had their graded precedence. Quote, quote, this type of unilineal descent group later became the model of the Korean family through the influence of Neo-Confucianism, as Zhu Xi and others advocated its re-establishment in China. <laughs> Fungian system and bureaucracy 
There were five peerage ranks below the royal ranks, in descending order with common English translations, Gong Gong, Duke, Hu Hu, Marquis, Bo Bo, Count, Z Z, Viscount, and Nan Nan, Baron. At times, a vigorous duke would take power from his nobles and centralize the state. Centralization became more necessary as the states began to war among themselves and decentralization encouraged more war. If a duke took power from his nobles, the state would have to be administered bureaucratically by appointed officials. Despite these similarities, there are a number of important differences from medieval Europe. One obvious difference is that the Zhou ruled from walled cities rather than castles. Another was China's distinct class system, which lacked an organized clergy but saw the Shangzi clan yeomen become masters of ritual and ceremony known as Shi. When a dukedom was centralized, these people would find employment as government officials or officers. These hereditary classes were similar to Western knights in status and breeding, but like Western clergy were expected to be something of a scholar instead of a warrior. Being appointed, they could move from one state to another. Some would travel from state to state peddling schemes of administrative or military reform. Those who could not find employment would often end up teaching young men who aspired to official status. The most famous of these was Confucius, who taught a system of mutual duty between superiors and inferiors. In contrast, the legalists had no time for Confucian virtue and advocated a system of strict laws and harsh punishments. The wars of the warring states were finally ended by the most legalist state of all, Qin. When the Qin dynasty fell and was replaced by the Han dynasty, many Chinese were relieved to return to the more humane virtues of Confucius. <laughs> <laughs> Agriculture Agriculture in the Zhou dynasty was very intensive and, in many cases, directed by the government. All farming lands were owned by nobles, who then gave their land to their serfs, a situation similar to European feudalism. For example, a piece of land was divided into nine squares in the well-field system, with the grain from the middle square taken by the government and that of surrounding squares kept by individual farmers. This way, the government was able to store surplus food and distribute it in times of famine or bad harvest. Some important manufacturing sectors during this period included bronze smelting, which was integral to making weapons and farming tools. Again, these industries were dominated by the nobility who directed the production of such materials. China's first projects of hydraulic engineering were initiated during the Zhou dynasty, ultimately as a means to aid agricultural irrigation. The Chancellor of Wei, Sun Chu Ao, who served King Zhuang of Chu, dammed a river to create an enormous irrigation reservoir in modern-day northern Anhui province. For this, Sun Chu is credited as China's first hydraulic engineer. The later Wei statesman Zimin Bao, who served Marquis Wen of Wei 445 BC, was the first hydraulic engineer of China to have created a large irrigation canal system. As the main focus of his grandiose project, his canal work eventually diverted the waters of the entire Zhang River to a spot further up the Yellow River. <laughs> <laughs> Military The early Western Zhou supported a strong army, split into two major units, the Six Armies of the West and the Eight Armies of Chengzhou. The armies campaigned in the northern lowest plateau, modern Ningxia and the Yellow River floodplain. The military prowess of Zhou peaked during the 19th year of King Zhao's reign, when the six armies were wiped out along with King Zhao on a campaign around the Han River. Early Zhou kings were true commanders-in-chief. They were in constant wars with barbarians on behalf of the fiefs called Guo, which at that time meant statelet or principality. King Zhao was famous for repeated campaigns in the Yangtze areas and died in his last action. Later King's campaigns were less effective. King Li led 14 armies against barbarians in the south, but failed to achieve any victory. King Zan fought the Quanrong nomads in vain. King Yu was killed by the Quanrong when Haoxing was sacked. Although chariots had been introduced to China during the Shang dynasty from Central Asia, the Zhou period saw the first major use of chariots in battle. Recent archaeological finds demonstrate similarities between horse burials of the Shang and Zhou dynasties and Indo-European peoples in the West. 
Other possible cultural influences resulting from Indo-European contact in this period may include fighting styles, head and hooves burials, art motifs and myths. Philosophy During the Zhou dynasty, the origins of native Chinese philosophy developed, its initial stages beginning in the 6th century BC. The greatest Chinese philosophers, those who made the greatest impact on later generations of Chinese, were Confucius, founder of Confucianism, and Laozi, founder of Taoism. Other philosophers, theorists, and schools of thought in this era were Mozi, founder of Mohism, Mencius, a famous Confucian who expanded upon Confucius' legacy, Shang Yang and Han Fei, responsible for the development of ancient Chinese legalism the core philosophy of the Qin dynasty, and Xuanzi, who was arguably the center of ancient Chinese intellectual life during his time, even more so than iconic intellectual figures such as Mencius. Topic. Li Established during the Western period, the Li traditional Chinese, Li simplified Chinese, Li pinyin, Li ritual system encoded an understanding of manners as an expression of the social hierarchy, ethics, and regulation concerning material life. The corresponding social practices became idealized within Confucian ideology. The system was canonized in the Book of Rites, Joli, and Yila compendiums of the Han Dynasty 206 BC to 220 AD, thus becoming the heart of the Chinese imperial ideology. While the system was initially a respected body of concrete regulations, the fragmentation of the Western Zhou period led the ritual to drift towards moralization and formalization in regard to the five orders of Chinese nobility. Ancestral temples size, legitimate number of pavilions Ceremonial regulations number of ritual vessels, musical instruments, people in the dancing troupe <laughs> Kings The rulers of the Zhou dynasty were titled Wang, Wang which is normally translated into English as King and was also the Shang term for their rulers. In addition to these rulers, King Wu's immediate ancestors, Danfu, Jili, and Wen, are also referred to as kings of Zhou, despite having been nominal vassals of the Shang kings. NB, dates in Chinese history before the first year of the Gong Regency in 841 BC are contentious and vary by source. Those below are those published by Sha Shang Zhou Chronology Project and Edward L. Shaughnessy's The Absolute Chronology of the Western Zhou Dynasty. Nobles of the Ji family proclaimed Duke Wei of Eastern Zhou as King Nan's successor after their capital, Chengzhou, fell to Qin forces in 256 BC. Ji Zhao, a son of King Nan, led a resistance against Qin for five years. The dukedom fell in 249 BC. The remaining Ji family ruled Yan and Wei until 209 BC. <laughs> Later tradition Topic. Claimed descendants The Han dynasty bestowed the hereditary title Zhou Zi Nan Jun upon the Zhou dynasty royal descendant Ji Jia Ji Jia and his descendants. This practice was referred to as two kings, three reverences. According to the New Book of Tang the Sui dynasty emperors were patrilineally descended from the Zhou dynasty kings via Ji Bo Chao Ji Bo Chao, who was the son of Duke Wu of Jin. Ji Bochao's family became known as the Sheep Tongue Family. Yang Shi Shi. The Yang of Hongnong Hongnong Yang Shi were asserted as ancestors by the Sui emperors, like the Longxi Li's were asserted as ancestors of the Tang emperors. The Li of Zhaojun and the Lu of Fanyang hailed from Shandong and were related to the Lu clan, which was also linked to the Yang of Hongnong and other clans of Guanlong. Duke Wu of Jin was claimed as the ancestors of the Hongnong Yang. The Yang of Hongnong, Jia of Hadong, Shang of Hene, and Wang of Taiyuan from the Tang dynasty were claimed as ancestors by Song dynasty lineages. There were dukedoms for the offspring of the royal families of the Zhou dynasty, Sui dynasty, and Tang dynasty in the later Jin, five dynasties. The Zhou dynasty King Ling's son Prince Jin is assumed by most to be the ancestor of the Taiyuan Wang lineage. 
The Longmen Wang were a cadet line of the Zhou dynasty descended Taiyuan Wang, and Wang Yan and his grandson Wang Tong hailed from his cadet line. Both Buddhist monks and scholars hailed from the Wang family of Taiyuan such as the monk Tanqian. The Wang family of Taiyuan included Wang Huan. The Taiyuan Wang family produced Wang Jun who served under Emperor Wai of Jin. A Fuzhou-based section of the Taiyuan Wang produced the Buddhist monk Baijong. During the Tang dynasty the Li family of Zhao Jun Zhao Jun Li Shi, the Kui family of Boling Bo Ling Kui Shi, the Kui family of Qing Qing He Kui Shi, the Lu family of Fanyang Fan Yang Lu Shi, the Zheng family of Xing Yang Xing Yang Zheng Shi, the Wang family of Taiyuan Taiyuan Wang Shi, and the Li family of Longxi Longxi Li Shi were the seven noble families between whom marriage was banned by law. Moria Mitsua wrote a history of the later Han Tang period of the Taiyuan Wang. Among the strongest families was the Taiyuan Wang. The prohibition on marriage between the clans issued in 659 by the Gaozong Emperor was flouted by the seven families since a woman of the Boling Kui married a member of the Taiyuan Wang, giving birth to the poet Wang Wei. He was the son of Wang Chulian who in turn was the son of Wang Zhou. The marriages between the families were performed clandestinely after the prohibition was implemented on the seven families by Gaozong. Their status as Seven Great Surnames became known during Gaozong's rule. The Zhou dynasty kings are the ancestors of the Zhou clan of Runan. The Linghu of Dunhuang Dunhuang Linghu Shi were descended from King Wen of Zhou through his son Duke Gao of Bai Bai Gong Gao. The Zheng family of Xingyang Xingyang Zheng Shi claimed descent from the Zhou dynasty kings via the rulers of the state of Zheng. The Marquis of Xingyang rank was created for Zheng Shi. The Xingyang Zheng spawned Zheng Daozhao and Zheng Shi. Zheng Wanjun was a member of the Xingyang Zheng. The Xingyang Zheng spawned Zheng Yuzhang Zheng Chao. The Xingyang Zheng spawned Zheng Zhang. The Zheng of Xingyang may have been miswritten in the records as the Zheng of Xingyang Xingyang Zheng Shi. Dong Yi Jia Zhu Da Zong Shi Shi family tree of the descendants of the Duke of Zhou in Chinese. The main line of the Duke of Zhou's descendants came from his firstborn son, the state of Lu ruler Bo Qin's third son Yu, Yu whose descendants adopted the surname Dong Yi. Dong Yi. The Duke of Zhou's offspring held the title of Wu Jing Bo Shi, Wu Jing Bo Shi, Wu Jing Bo Shi, Wu Jing Bo Shi, Duke Huan of Lu's son through Qingfu. Qingfu was the ancestor of Mencius. He was descended from Duke Yang of the state of Lu Lu Yang Gong. Duke Yang was the son of Bo Qin, who was the son of the Duke of Zhou. The genealogy is found in the Mencius family tree. Meng Zi Shi Jia Da Zong Shi. Mencius's descendants were awarded the Wujing Boshi title. One of the Duke of Zhou's 72 generation descendants' family tree was examined and commented on by Song Lian. Astrology Zhou is represented by two stars, Ada Capricorni. Zhou Yi Zhou Yi the first star of Zhou", and 21 Capricorni Zhou er, Zhou er, the second star of Zhou", in 12 states, asterism. Zhou is also represented by the star Beta Serpentis in asterism, right wall, heavenly market enclosure see Chinese constellation. See also Family tree of the Zhou dynasty Four occupations Historical capitals of China Tomb of Marquis Yi of Zheng Women in ancient and imperial China Notes <laughs>